Welcome back to Life of Birch and welcome to the Life of Birch Mini Moto Garage. Is this not just a living room? <laughs> Anyway, as I was saying, welcome back to the Mini Moto Garage here at the Life of Birch headquarters. No, yeah, it's literally a living room. Ugh. What? Anyway, ignore that. Uh, so today we are finally rebuilding the transmission in my Honda Navi with just over 800 miles. You guys may or may not remember, I bought the Navi used and shortly thereafter realized that something was seriously wrong because it was shuddering and doing all kinds of weird stuff. <laughs> you see that? And we have it here, all ready for its transmission refresh slash rebuild since I believe we narrowed it down to a faulty something going on with the clutch. So instead of just tearing it open and trying to fix it, we're gonna upgrade everything while we're in there. So fingers crossed it not only fixes it, but makes it even better. So super stoked on that. But first things first, we gotta get a baseline of how fast or slow, I guess you would say, it is in the stock form. All right, boys and girls, welcome here to the Life of Birch Drag Strip. You mean public road? Bro, shut up. It's not a public road. It's my drag strip. Uh, anyway, so we are going to do best out of three runs to see how fast slash slow the Navi is in stock form. I forgot that this Navi is one of the only bikes that we have that does not have the quad lock set up. So I put that on there so we can see the GPS race timer that I have. And we have uh, two different timers set, a 0 to 40 and a 0 to 50. And then it's also going to show us what our top speed is from the run. Like I said, we're going to do the best out of three runs but i'm only going to show you one just for time's sake i'll just show you whichever one was the fastest and i'm going to show it just from start to finish no cuts so that you can have a good feel for like actually how fast slash slow it is all right welcome back to the living room i mean uh garage that was quite the abysmal uh speed run probably the slowest speed run in history and the weird thing is it just progressively got worse and worse so the fastest run that you guys saw was actually the first run which was an 11.1 second zero to 40 and a 34.8 second zero to 50. that was also the run where we got the highest speed out of all the other runs and it was actually on the way back like looping back to the starting point we got up to 52 miles per hour but then after that for some reason and everything just got slower and slower. Uh, run number two was 11.20 to 40, so 0.1 second slower, not that big of a difference, but then zero to 50 was 74.9 seconds. And I'm sure you're wondering why is that more than double the zero to 50 time of the first run? And that's because for some reason, the Navi didn't even have enough juice to get up to 50 before we hit the slight uphill part that slowed us down. So it didn't actually get up to 50 on the second run until the big downhill portion, which was almost at the end. And then run number Number three was even worse. We had an 11.40 to 40 and 75.20 to 50. So I don't know. I mean, it progressively got slower. The zero to 40 was only by point. 2.3 of a second, but the zero to 50, it's just weird that after the first run, it just couldn't even get up to 50 until we hit the second huge downhill portion. So I don't know if something in the transmission is getting warm enough that it's just not holding as tight or what, but that's not great. But either way, we got our baseline done. We got the Navi in here to finally get some work started. And uh, I guess first things first, we just gotta get this thing taken apart. So we got the transmission cover off right there. It was fairly simple and you can see that that's what it looks like with it off. You have your variator up front and the clutch out back. Both of those we're gonna be replacing today. So I'll show you the new ones in a second. And like I said, taking it off was fairly simple. You just have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bolts that need to come off around the cover. I've seen a video or two of somebody taking this off and they took off the uh, Kickstarter and it didn't seem like that was necessary. So I didn't, 
and it still came off. And then, uh, oh, you also have to undo this clamp right here, that little clamp right there and slide it down so this little tube comes off. And then you kind of have to like wiggle it down around to get it out of there. And then this little cover will pop off also. But uh, yeah, so it's off. Next step is getting the variator and the clutch off and uh, seeing what we're working with. The clutch is the part that I think is messed up. So it'll be interesting once we get this off to see if any of the springs are out of place or anything like that. But uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and get this off. And by the way, I forgot to mention, these were all eight millimeters around there to get that off. And then these, I want to say 22 mil and 19 mil. So we'll buzz these off with the impact, my brand new impact. I totally forgot to hit record. So let's just pretend that this is the first time this one's coming off, okay? Wow, so easy. All right, so both of these nuts are taken off. This was indeed a 19 mil and a 22 mil. And I used my fancy new impact gun to take that off. And then I have a little clutch holder here that I think was like uh, 11 or 12 bucks on Amazon. So I'll link that below. And essentially this thing, just those little feet hold in here so the clutch doesn't spin as you buzz it off. This one was able to come off without any sort of holder. I was gonna put this in the fins, but I didn't want it to bend it, but that's all right. Cause it came off no problem. And now we should just have to pop these off. Yep. <laughs> So that's the bell housing off, and then we have one more uh, nut or whatever left here to take off the clutch itself. Oh, damn, that's right, that actually comes off first. <laughs> and then this is the entire clutch. You can see in there, I believe that's called the Contra spring, and we have a replacement one of those also. So essentially how it works is this is the clutch, and as everything spins, eventually these little parts here expand out and grab the bell housing getting the back wheel to spin. So I think the issue is something with the clutch to where this is not grabbing the bell housing properly. Can't really tell what I'm looking at to see if it's like too glazed or what. But anyway, it it just seems like as this starts spinning, the clutch is not like whenever it's first grabbing the bell housing, it's slipping or something and that's causing the shuddering. So we're just replacing the whole freaking thing. So next step is taking this apart. It is loaded by that contra spring. So the way that I understand it is you can just kind of step on it to keep pressure on it and then blast this thing off with a 39 millimeter impact. That was easy. You can see how it kind of came apart with that spring there, but yeah, that's what we're looking at here. And so far, I don't see any of the springs out of place, so still not sure why it's been acting like that. Anybody who knows more than I do, maybe comment and let me know whether or not the clutch pads or whatever they're considered here look like they're glazed or what. And yeah, everything, well, we still gotta, I lied, still gotta take this off. All right, let me turn the light on for you so you guys can see better, and then we're gonna pull this off. This is the last part of the variator that comes off and it has that plate right there that you got to hold in place. And then inside there, you got the stock roller weights and then the stock sliders right there, both of which are going to be replaced. We got some much lighter rollers, which should help with acceleration. Oh yeah. And then that sleeve there. So that is everything all taken apart. Once again, we got the clutch there, variator there. That's the belt. That's the clutch bell housing. And that's part of the variator also. Now let's check out what we're replacing it with. So we got here, the NCY upgraded clutch and bell housing. You can see that the bell housing is machined away so it's much lighter than the stock one and it's also designed to grab much better. And then here you got the upgraded fancy NCY clutch right there. They do make ones, I forget if NCY does, but there are companies that make ones that are adjustable to where you can adjust how tight the springs are so you can adjust when it grabs. But I really don't know much about scooters and friggin' CBT stuff so I figured I'd just keep it as simple as possible while still upgrading it. But you can see this looks so much nicer and just touching this, I can tell that it's much uh, coarser than the other one. So maybe that was the issue is that the other clutch was glazed. But either way, this should be a real good improvement over stock. And then to go with that over here, we have the Malasi Variator. Malasi, Malosi, I forget how it's pronounced, but you got that thing right there that holds in the roller weights that I was talking about. So you got a new replacement for that. And then right there, you have the plate that covers it and the sliders right there. And then somewhere in here, yeah, under there, it's hard to see, but you got the rollers there. Those are lighter rollers that come with it, kind of pre-designed to just get the best results out of the Navi possible. Both of these things should improve not only the acceleration, but also the top speed. And then you can tune it as you go and get different weight rollers, depending on if you want a higher speed, more acceleration, whatever. So this is kind of just the starting point. If you want to tune further, you can go from there, but I'm just concerned about getting this thing running properly. So uh, it also comes with these two bolts right there that I guess you got to use when you use this new plate, just so that it clears everything with 
in the transmission case. And then that is the new Contra spring in there that'll hold everything together. And not only that, but Scooter Swap Shop over here sent some stickers with it. And apparently a Starburst also, which is freaking awesome. I will eat that later if Nina doesn't get to it first. So Scooter Swap Shop has been awesome. Customer service has been great. I reached out to them kind of telling them what was going on and they led me in the right direction with all this. So I'll link it below. And you also get 5% off with the discount code below if you want to try this yourself. Uh, and actually 5% off anything from Scooter Swap Shop with the code below. All right, so since I still have the 39 mil put on the impact, we'll start with the clutch. So we'll take the spring off, but all of this right here gets reused. We'll need the spring out of here. And then we reuse this collar, I believe. So that just slides in like that. And then the new clutch is gonna go right over like that. We'll hold that down with our feet and put that over and screw it down or at least start it screwing down. And then once it's held in place, we can zip it down. All right, so that is on there. Then we'll take this stuff and set it aside so it doesn't confuse me, all the stock stuff. Then we'll set all that aside and come back to it after the variator. All right, so then we got all the new Melosi variator stuff here, and it's just going to replace the stock pieces that we took off here. So you can see this piece replaces that, and you're just gonna take the new sliders and slide them in just like so. And you can see there's a wider face there and then one that doesn't have that extra little fin and the wider part is gonna face out like that. And then you got that side and you're gonna take all the rollers and put them in place like so. There we go. So you can see this is the new setup compared to the old setup right there. Pretty much just gotta make them look the same, but this one is gonna perform better because the rollers are lighter. All right, so let's set the stock crap to the side, and then it's time to start getting everything buttoned back up. Okay, so for the variator, you're gonna take that and then slide that plate back over it like so and then make sure you hold on to that as you slide it on so everything stays in place and make sure that little shim goes all the way in as far as it can then you're going to take the clutch and put the bell housing over that and put the belt through that little groove right there and then slide that back over this spindle making sure to keep that in the groove and then getting that over that. Then we'll take that washer and put it on and thread that on to hold the clutch in place. And it's looking good already. Then we got these two pieces that we pulled off from the front earlier and those will go right back on followed by this little thing, the washer, and then the nut. And then we just gotta buzz these guys back down. All right, so everything should be good now. Everything's all nice and tightened down. So I think we should be good. I'm actually, before I put all this back together, I'm gonna pull the Navi outside and run it without the cover on so we can make sure that it seems like everything's working. And once we A-OK -okay that, we'll put the cover back on. Started slipping. All right, so here you can see it all nice and set up. Hopefully you can see it better than you could inside. I'm working with terrible lighting, so I keep having to turn this light on and off. But uh, yeah, moment of truth, start it up and see if it seems like it's working. This is what happens when you get too excited and you don't follow the steps. Remember these that I talked about? Well, I never put them in and they go right there. So you see that bolt and that bolt up there. Those have to come out because they stick out too far for the uh, new variator to go past. So we have to put these in. That's why it freaking locked up. Come on, numb nuts. All right, so you can see here, the black one is the new one. You can see how much lower it sits than the other one. So it gives way more clearance. Okay, that should be what we needed. Let's try it again. There we go. That sounds much better. Seems like everything is good to go here and working properly. Now we're just gonna button everything back up. A few bolts later. Let's go, baby. She is all buttoned up and running like a top. Welcome to the next day. Obviously, it got dark out before we could continue this, but today is the day we're finally going to find out if she's running properly and how much better she's running, aka how much faster is she. Oh, let me put that in before I forget. All right, so I got to be honest with you, that was not the first startup today. This took a couple different takes to get it how I wanted it. 
So that's not the first kick, but it did start on, I think, the second or third kick. So way better than yesterday. but I can't say for sure whether that's just because it was already running yesterday or if it's because of the upgrades that we did. But either way, I'm stoked to see it start up so easily and hopefully that means she's gonna run just as well. All right, let's get to the racetrack. Public road. Dude, shut up. Justin Toon Birch was apparently too excited about all the improvements made by the new upgrades to get any cohesive thoughts out for the rest of filming, so voiceover Birch is here to talk you through how incredible these upgrades really are as we watch the best run put down by the new and improved Navi. Not only did this totally fix the shaking and shuddering that the Navi had before, confirming my suspicions of a messed up clutch, but it also increased the 0-40 to 40 time by an average of one full second and increased the top speed by 8%. The only trade-off was a slightly decreased 0-50 to 50 time, meaning that while the new upgrades greatly improve power and response responsiveness down low, they do sacrifice a bit of umph from 40 miles per hour and up. But with that said, umph up top or not, given a nice downhill straightaway, the Navi now hits a top speed that's 4 miles per hour higher than we got in stock form, which I was definitely pleasantly surprised to see. I'll put up all the official numbers here for comparison's sake, and you'll notice that while the Navi in stock form kept performing worse and worse on each test run, it actually performed better and better on each test run with the new upgrades, aside from the first run's winning 9.9 .9 seconds 0-40, to which beat out the stock Navi's best 0-40 by a blistering 1.2 seconds. You'll also see that excluding the random 34.8 second outlier where the stock Navi must have had some sort of a tailwind and managed to hit 50 before the uphill stretch of road, the stock Navi only bested the upgraded Navi's 0 to 50 by 0.7 seconds, which is a price I'm definitely willing to pay for the increased power down low and improved 56 mile per hour top speed. But numbers aside, these upgrades have honestly made this Navi feel like a totally different bike. I'm not sure why it needed a new clutch with only about 800 miles on it, but I'm glad that it did because this CVT rebuild made the Navi so much more enjoyable. You can really feel the increased power down low, which makes getting around town much more fun and gives me much more confidence when pulling out into traffic. Even though the 0-50 to 50 times show a decrease in power up top, I don't think it's actually that noticeable, and it'll still hold 45 uphill with ease. At the end of the day, the decreased umph up top didn't take away any rideability or fun, but the increased power down low added to both the rideability and fun of the bike, which makes this a total win in my eyes. Long story short, if you have a Navi and you don't do this upgrade, you're an idiot. So don't be an idiot, go to ScooterSwapShop.com Get yourself a CVT upgrade for your Navi and use code BIRCH for 5% off everything on the site while you're at it. Once again, links to all the parts that I installed and any specialty tools like the clutch holder will be listed in the description below. As always, shout out to the Patreon members for supporting me and keeping me rolling through winter, and I'll catch you on the next one. Love you guys. Peace. Oh, so basic. Hope you play this. Damn, I prayed it. Nice song, yeah. I be Candace, all souls fake it, pay those ay, placements, ay, fuck shit ay. And I'm still waiting on a brighter day It's been a minute, been rough many times more And I'm kicking rocks to a sky of gray Praying hard, talk to me for I'm done for